finally, the weather is sort of cooperating. Rain this morning. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, but we're going to see if we can get the first ride of the season. And by ride, I mean the one which I actually videoed. been a while so I'm just gonna make sure all the cameras are still working the microphone's still working make sure everything is what it is yeah I've taken the bike out for just a little quick spin here and there just kind of blowing the dust off of it but now it's time to do some damage just a quick note anybody remember the old TV show a simple life on the Cole Ritchie and Paris Hilton they took all their credit cards, moved them out to the country, blah, 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 had to survive on their own. It's the uh, video that made Paris Hilton the it girl there for a while. This was really before social media took off, you know, so she didn't just get the post naked selfies on Instagram. She actually had to be on TV. Well, there was a couple episodes where she had to, or both of them, had to work at a dairy farm for a couple of days. That dairy farm is right there in front of me. I don't think it's a dairy farm anymore. I think the guy sold out. But uh, after all, Nicole and Paris spent a couple of days working right there. And it's a funny note about that show, Paris Hilton was always scheduled to be on it, but Nicole Richie wasn't. It was supposed to be Paris's best friend, somebody nobody ever heard of, named uh, Kim Kardashian. And I think it was Kim Kardashian's sex tape came out that kind of killed her from being on it. Then, of course, they went and filmed it. Then uh, Paris Hilton's came out, and then everybody wanted to see the show because she had the sex tape. If they'd have known, they'd probably left old Kardashian on it. Which would have been a shame if they'd have left her on it. She'd have been forgotten about by now. We still wouldn't have to put up with her and her whole stupid family. Anyway, that's neither here or there. I'm just throwing that out there. But, um, again, this is uh, just out for a ride just to see. Basically, it's a trial run. Going to take a little loop here up one of MotorcycleRoads.com's top roads in Arkansas. This ain't it, but I'll be here for just a minute. It's a Highway 41. I can't remember what they call it on the side. It has a name there. But it's a nice little road. Got good, some good elevation changes. Got some a lot of sweeping curves, a couple of you know, pretty sharp curves couple of straightaways. It's a, just a nice little quick fun ride to end up at the, if you, if you keep following it on, I believe it goes all the way to the Arkansas River, up into a little park here at the Arkansas River. This is, this is it right here. This is part of it. And you can see mostly going through farmland. I mean, it is Arkansas, home of the chicken, uh, chicken houses. But it's a beautiful day for it. Now, I'm going to try to get a little bit more consistent with my videos. I know last year I was trying to do a lot of those top rides in Arkansas. I'm going to try to do some more of those. I've got some people that also own some bikes. A uh, guy I used to work with, he just went and bought him one. He's got a couple of brothers. Last time I talked to him, he was, he was talking his brothers into buying some. So maybe we can do some group rides. I know a couple of ladies that both have bikes. Maybe get, you know, get together, do some more or less solo stuff. We'll try to do some organized ones, some poker runs, and things like that. Just get a little bit more involved, a little bit more consistent with the videos. Now, the guy that bought the bike, I have to tell you, he's one of those that the name brand means everything. 
he spent a couple of years, you know, trying to learn guitar, and he's bought a lot of guitars. He's got a good job. He don't mind you know, spending the money. But he's got some really good guitars. But all I ever hear from him is, oh, he wants a Gibson. He wants a Gibson. I keep telling him the ones he's got are as good as or better than the Gibsons he's looking at. But it's got to have that name on it. So you can guess what kind of uh, motorcycle he bought. And I haven't seen it, to be honest. But I'm, I'm sure it's perfectly fine. But he had to have that Harley name on the side. Got to have a Harley. And he's one of those people he <clears throat> absolutely admits his main goal is to drive up and down the main boulevard there just to be seen cruising on his Harley. He, matter of fact, when he got it, he said the very first day he started up there in his garage, he said, I got to get some new pipes on it. You know, got to be loud. Got to be seen, I guarantee you. If When we go riding, everything he owns will have Harley Davidson written on it. It'll be black leather or orange. Just for the note, people, leather comes in other colors. All right. It don't have to be black. Diversify, man. Diversify. But he got a bike. That's what matters. He, he probably ain't going to do no cross-country trips on it, but more power to him. He's out. <laughs> of course, he's out. I say that like he came out of the closet, although I got to tell you, he uh, works in the medical field. We, we both work in the medical field. And uh, I saw one of his patients one time. And she was watching a cooking show on TV. And she was talking about, yeah, I like all these cooking shows, but boy, they just have a lot of homosexuals on here. She says, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I just don't want it pushed in my face like they do. And I let her rant and everything. And I said, you know, I'm actually kind of uh, surprised you feel that way about homosexuals and you go see, you know, my friend. She said, why, is he gay? I said, oh, yeah, he's super gay. She's like, well, normally I can tell. I just, I just didn't get that sense from him. I said, well, you missed all that on that one because that boy is flaming. Now, just for the record, he's not. And uh, he may actually tilt the other way where he's a little bit homophobic. But didn't change the fact that next time that woman sees him, she's going to bring up, I got a nephew that I think you'll be, or something. Knowing this woman, I guarantee she's going to throw that out there. And when he, uh, when he comes yelling at me, I'm going to die laughing because he deserves it. I switched jobs just a couple months ago. And we'll get back to that in a second. But I switched jobs and I put, had to put him down for a, uh, pers or a business reference or business or personal one. And they actually sent out a questionnaire to him that, for him to fill out and send back. And we knew the place I was going at. Everybody knew everybody. It was just a formality. So he literally just wrote on the uh, form homo and mailed it back to him. Tell us what you know about him. He wrote, homo, sent it back. I got the job, so I understand it was in jest. Everybody knew it was, but... So he deserved that. Now, the new job, I'm out of my office. You know, I sat in an office for 10 years, no window, sitting indoors. I'd go to work when the before the sun came up, get home after the sun went down. But now... I'm out and about a lot more. Still got an office, got a window, nice view. But I'm out and about more. Which means I'll be taking the bike to work. And I'm not ashamed of that. Now we're coming up on a little community up here. And it's just, it's not even a dot on a map, to be honest. I, I really don't. Went to high school with a lot of kids that came from this place. And I never understood it. They all thought it was the greatest place around. There's nothing there. At the time I was in high school, they had a post office and a gas station. I believe the gas station is now 
closed down. I think it's now just a little cafe, what my dad used to call the Spit and Whittle Club. Old men get there in the morning, do nothing but, you know, sit around, drink coffee, eat one piece of toast, and talk about the good old days or who died. Yeah, this is it right here. So, I mean, people think it's a great community. There's what used to be the post office, and there's the little cafe. Now up here on the right, this is what intrigued me. They have what's called the youth shelter, right by out of there. And uh, every time we'd get a new kid in the school, show up at school, we'd always just assume they were from the youth shelter. They would come for a couple of days or a couple of months. They'd show up, they'd be there. And I never understood what it took to be put in that youth shelter. I don't know if these were runaways. I don't know if these were put there by the courts. I don't know if they were foster kids and in between homes. I, it wasn't exactly an orphanage. I don't honestly know what it was. And it's one of those things you never want to ask the kids, you know, hey, why are you in this? Did you stab somebody with a you know, prison shank or something? But I always wondered about that. Anyway, this was uh, the little dot in the road. I meant to bring my GPS so I could put the telemetry on this video because there's one thing I'm interested in, and that was the the elevation. Because we're fixing to come up to uh, a couple of curves here that are sharp. They're tight little curves. I don't know, but I know what you can't tell is the elevation drop. It's hard to see on these videos how steep something is. But right here, we are getting steep. I don't know who first blazed this trail because they pretty much went straight up the side of this little hill. I'd like to know how quickly we rise and fall right here. But I didn't bring my GPS, so I'd like to come back and try this out sometime because we are still going down. Pretty steep, too. nice thing about it is after all these corners they reward you let you pick up your average again they give you a nice little straightaway here to wind it back out now as you see we're out here nothing but farmland not a lot out here however several years ago a guy basically took over a company from his dad his dad owned a bulldozer business now this bulldozer business happened to be at a time where they were putting up gas wells, pumping natural gas out of this area every square foot they could. They were putting these gas pumps around everywhere. So they had to build these pads to build the gas wells on. So this bulldozer business was just as busy as it could be. I mean, they built a big old building. They actually started another business where they did some drilling. But the bulldozer work, they... Uh, I mean, money hand over fist. Well, the guy who owned it, who took it over from his dad, he built him a house out here. He was from this area. So he gets it in his head to build a house. I guess he thought that was going to be a permanent thing, a bulldozer. So he built a house that is way above and beyond the typical little, you know, ranch-style farmhouses you see, like this one. Well, the uh, gas well business kind of moved out. I guess they tapped it all. So now he's stuck with a house that he tried to sell. You can see this is not what you would call a posh neighborhood. He's not really bringing in the uh, big money neighbors. So he got stuck with a house that he can't unload and the taxes on it gotta be killing him. I mean, unless he paid cash, just the mortgage on it has to be killing him. He's, it's one of those situations where you're gonna have to find some retired CEO that wants to live out here in the nature before you can really unload it. The thing is, off to the right, over that little ridge, should be able to see down into the Arkansas River. So here's the house. You can see it's coming up on it for a while. I mean, this is obviously bigger than the other houses we've been passing. Look at it. Kind of sticks out and it's a uh, I mean, you got some good land. You got the little gated fence there. It's got good land. It's cleared off. It's nice, everything. But, and I would be willing to bet 
you look out back, probably got a backyard and drop off and you probably got a great view of the Arkansas River Valley. But again, it's gonna take somebody, it's gonna to have to be the right person to actually come along and want. I don't, now his little drilling business is still in business and I haven't heard anything about that house being for sale. He may have changed his mind, made his peace with it, restructured, got everything going, but the bulldozer business actually closed down or at least the, uh, the shop, local shop. I know they had, oh, several yards scattered about where they worked out of. So he may be doing better than I thought. I don't know, that's a little piece of local trivia just throwing out there. I'm rooting for the guy. I'm, he was a couple years older than me in high school. I know him's always been a pretty decent guy, pretty decent family. So I'm rooting for him. Uh, well, again, I was just, this ride is really about testing the, the cameras, the microphone, the setup, the helmet, blah, 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 you know, everything. Just software, still if I remember how. So I want to just play a little background music and uh, let you enjoy the scenery. It looks like I'm going to make it this route before the rain gets here, so... Enjoy the ride.